we are um, in a series entitled Why Evangelize? Why Evangelize? And uh, I came up with 10 reasons why we should evangelize. And I think I uh, might even have an 11th one that came to me today. But let's look at this. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And we know that faith is acting upon what God said, right? Believing in and acting upon what God said. You can say, say the long definition, uh, which is believing in and acting upon what God said in spite of appearances. But the bottom line is just simply acting on what God said um, in spite of appearances or even understanding because you don't have to have understanding. Just obey. Amen? All right, let's look at this. Why evangelize? Why evangelize? Well, we should evangelize. Why should we spread the gospel, the good news of Christ? Well, the first reason we said was because it is the good news. In other words, why should we? Evangelism is spreading the good news. Why should we spread the good news? Because it is the good news. And what we have said in the past, and this, of course, is reviewed, is that when you have some good news, you, you share it. Yes. Amen? Amen. Uh, a good current example is this movie, The War Room. Uh, as soon as we saw it, I, I don't know about you, but I went and told everybody I knew to go see it. And how many of y'all did the same thing? Anybody? Yeah. Why? Because it was a good movie. And if you get some good news, you tell people about it. You go to a restaurant, it's really good, you tell people about it, right? Yeah. In fact, Good Lord, we really are into that now because we have this thing called social media and folk be posting. I mean, it's like, what is it, Facebook, Instagram, you know, tweets, Twitter. And so folk be posting. I never thought I'd live to see the day when folk would sit down and eat before they eat, they take pictures of their food so the people can go, look what I'm eating. I'm like too busy trying to eat myself to post y'all the food. But, Every once in a while I might do something like that, but not that often. But anyway, the concept is still the same, and that is you're sharing about something that you feel is good, and so that's why we should evangelize. Well, the second reason is it's the Great Commission, um, meaning it's the mission of the church, and if we're not spreading the gospel, what are we doing? You know, I mean, really, if we're not spreading the gospel, what are we doing? For example, there are other things that um, churches do. For example, we feed the poor, we clothe the naked, feed the hungry, and visit the prisoner. Jesus talked about all that in Matthew 25, right? He said, as you have done this to the least of these, so you have done it unto me. And that's good. Those are, those are part of the things that churches do parts of the things the churches do. But how many of you know that's not the Great Commission? In fact, so much so that when we when we uh, get food and clothing, what do we always make sure we do? Get that gospel. Because that's the that is the Great Commission. If we were just to give food, food in other words, there's people who, who give food clothing uh, even better than we can but they don't give that gospel necessarily with it. You know, they might give the food, they might give the clothing, but they're not going to tell somebody about Christ, which is going to outlast the food and clothing. So we, we do it because it's the Great Commission. We do it because if we don't do it, no one else can or will. In other words, the church has to give the gospel because the gospel has been entrusted to us. No one else can do it because it hasn't been entrusted to them. And then, it, it, because it hasn't been entrusted to them, they don't have the incentive to do it. I mean, in other words, you know, pe people who don't know the Lord, they're not going to do it. If we don't do it, no one will. Amen? Yes. Someone, we, we evangelize because someone needs to help save the souls going to hell at an, at an alarming rate. And the emphasis there was that we're in the end times and folk are really dying at a rapid rate. And I think I used the example last week when I said that I was watching the news and they did a survey and in the study they found out that amongst the 
30 major cities that uh, here in the month of September, they've already reached the level of uh, violent crimes that they reached uh, at the end of last year. So here we are in September, and it took the cities last year to reach it in December, but in other words, it's going to be a banner year for violence. And you can see that because now you turn on the TV and this term uh, uh, mass uh, shootings, you know, that's just a common day thing now, huh? You just wait for the next shoot to drop. Amen. I hate to say it, but that's the truth. Amen? Amen. So, so since people are dying at an alarming rate and dying in places that you wouldn't think about people dying. I mean, you know, we always have people dying in wars, right? But people are dying now in, in movie theaters. People are dying now in churches. Amen? Amen. So you got you to gotta be ready and you got to tell people about Jesus because the person you didn't tell about Jesus that next day, you know, they could be gone. And you could have missed an opportunity. Number five reason. Witnessing is easy to do when you trust the Spirit and are led by the Spirit. The key point there was it gets easier the more you do it. How many of y'all have learned it gets easier the more you do it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? It gets easier the more you do it. I mean, it really does. The first time you ask somebody, are you saved, you might ask them with fear and trembling, you know, with teeth and knees shaking. But after a while, it just comes out really easy. You know, are you saved? Where do you go to church? It's just, you know, kind of like, how's the weather? What time is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know how you think about it. When you see people, I mean, I've got to a point now that I'm not um, hesitant to strike up a conversation with somebody, um, you know, whether it's, you know, whatever, how you doing today? Sure is hot today. You know, hey, do you go to church? I mean, it's, you know, sometimes I don't even need that little icebreaker. But the point I'm trying to say is the more you do it, the easier it gets. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like those two uh, meditation scriptures that I gave you on Sunday. I'm strong in the what? In the Lord and in the power of His might. See, you need to remember that. It's not you anyway. It involves you, but really, I mean, you're doing it, but you have a helper on the inside. So, He's just looking for you to start. And once you start, He's going to help. And then the other scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? So, He's strengthening you to do it. Now, reason number six, let's see. Because God loves everybody. And everyone deserves a chance to hear the truth of God's love and be saved. And we found that in 2 Peter 3 and 9, where it says it's not God's will that any should perish, but all men should come to repent. Now, remember we said this is a real deep one because you have to really meditate on this because the truth of the matter is our flesh will, will lead us to make judgments on people and whether it's judgment because of how they look, their race, whatever. And uh, the truth of the matter is, everyone, every human being is God's greatest creation, man. And he loves, he loves them. You know, they may not love him, but he loves them. And so we have to give everybody a chance. In fact, uh, the person that you might not think is worthy or deserving of salvation, that used to be us. Amen. 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 That used to be us. You know, back in the day, we, we didn't love God. The, the scripture says, we love him because he what? First, First loves, loves us. us. Right? So, there are a lot of people out there right now, they don't love God, but God does love them. And so, we're just trying to get them to understand. That's why I love um, our track. In fact, I'm getting ready to order some more um, God Loves You tracks. Because to me, that's the key one. A lot of times, I've been handing out a lot of the others right now, um, the ABC of Salvation. In fact, we handed out a lot of those yesterday at the hospital. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible says, with loving kindness in Jeremiah, have I drawn thee. It's the love of God. It's the love. When you get down to the nitty gritty, it's all about love. Amen? People got people need love. Everybody needs love. 
If you're saved already, you need some more love. If you're not saved, you need love. People are, the people who reject God, when you really get down to it, you start talking to them, you find out they just need love. Amen. Amen. All right, so number seven. Number six was God loves everybody, and that's why we should do it. Number seven is because it's the least we can do since God sent his only son to die in our place. In other words, uh, the scripture says the love of Christ compels us. We can't pay it back, so we might as well pay it what? Forward. Forward. We can't pay him back. There's nothing we can do to repay Jesus for what he did. But we can at least give him a token of our appreciation by paying it forward. And uh, we call that what? Living for what? Living for Christ. LFC. You know, there's KFC and then there's LFC. <laughs> Come on now. See, KFC, they do chicken. LFC, we do souls. Amen? Amen. We, we're in the saving souls business. Now, don't get me wrong. Somebody in their mind says, Pastor, we can't save anybody's So No, we know that Jesus can, but the truth of the matter is he needs... Listen, we are the body of Christ. We're his hands. We're his feet. We're his body in the earth. So his body's got to get to get to do it. And so we are in the saving soul's business. And he'll work through us by his spirit. But the truth of the matter is, the scripture says, how can they believe unless they would? Hear. And how can they hear without a preacher? In other words, without somebody saying something. See, we're his, see, we we're the body of Christ, so we're his what? We're his what? We're his mouth. We're his mouth in the earth. How can they believe unless they hear? This is Romans chapter 10. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? Oh, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace. Somebody say, I've been sent. Yeah, that's the great commission. See, we've all been sent. The first word is what? Go. Go. That's that's sin. <laughs> okay? Alright, so uh, it's the least thing we can do to, to uh, try to demonstrate the appreciation for what God has done for us. Yeah. Alright, number eight. We should evangelize because God doesn't hold us responsible for others' responses just for our presentation. Um, basically, we should evangelize because um, no pressure. That's the best way to say it. We should evangelize because there's no pressure. You know, wouldn't you love a job that you were in sales and they paid you every time you made a presentation? Doesn't matter what the person, doesn't matter what they do with it, just every time you make a present presentation, you got some more credit in your account. You got some more money coming. You'd be you'd be trying to sell a widget everywhere you could, huh? You'd just be telling anybody about it. Because every time you told somebody you won't get a, 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 a paycheck, I mean that's really that's no pressure. And it's not, not only is no pressure, it's a no lose situation. So really, to be honest with you, every time you tell somebody about the gospel, it's no pressure, and it's a no lose. It's a win-win situation. Either either you're planning, you're watering, um, but God's going to give the increase. You don't really know, and you don't have to know. You don't have to know what they do with it. You just have to do your part, God's part, and what, and our part. Okay. So this brings us to the new information. Um, this is number nine. Um, reason number nine. And we should evangelize because our obedience to this commandment is the very thing we're going to be judged by on Judgment Day. Now, I went through eight very powerful reasons. I think this one is a real powerful one right here. Our obedience to this commandment is the very thing we're going to be judged by. Now, don't get this wrong. I don't mean this is the very thing that's going to determine your salvation. I didn't say that. 
but it is the very thing you're going to be judged by at the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. In other words, you're not saved by works, but you're saved to do good works. Now, after you get saved, the good works you do, the fruit you do is trying to get someone either to Christ or get them to grow in Christ. This is one of the two. It's either evangelism or discipleship. It's just that, just that simple. It ain't nothing else. You either try to get somebody saved or you try to help the saved to um, grow up in the, in the things of God. 